Now, Storm Tracker 9 weather on KEZI 9 News. Well, the big story for the West Coast has been the excessive heat, and in fact, we do have the excessive heat warnings west of the Cascades, pretty much all the way from Portland, all the way down through Medford and inland into the Cascades. We're looking at a heat advisory as well. So you can't really escape the heat unless you go to the Oregon coast for temperatures in the 70s, but we're going to be seeing some relief here in the days to come. So just keep in mind with the excessive heat, drink plenty of fluids, try not to stay out in the direct sun for very long periods of time. Uh, don't leave kids and pets inside unattended vehicles. And of course, you can, if you can, check on the elderly as well because they're very susceptible to the heat. Now, this is going to be lasting for the next couple of days, but tonight's temperature is staying fairly mild along the Oregon coast, mid 50s to upper 50s over towards North Bend. Into the Willamette Valley, temperatures have been on the mild side as well, generally between about 55 to 60 degrees. Warmer down towards the Umpqua Basin in Roseburg, about 66 degrees, and even into the Cascades, temperatures in the 50s and 60s as well. Heading out the door in the next couple of days for the Lama Valley. Again, we're still going to be looking at the very warm mornings overall. Even at 8 o'clock in the morning, temperatures close to 70 degrees. And then, of course, when we get to the heat of the day, we're going to be looking at very similar heat temperatures, generally between 100 and 105 degrees. For the Oregon coast, a little bit on the breezy side, temperatures generally still into the low 70s. We had inland, again, between about 100 and 105 degrees, warmest to the south. Slightly cooler up towards the north, 101 in Corvallis, 102 in Eugene, even mid 80s up in San Ian Pass. So what are we going to be looking at in terms of our storm cast? Well, this particular model wants to increase low clouds along the Oregon coast. It'll mostly stay offshore. I don't think we're going to see those low clouds directly until we get towards, say, mostly into Tuesday for sure. In fact, you can kind of see that here on Tuesday. You can start seeing the leading edge of some more clouds way offshore. Those will finally enhance the onshore flow along the Oregon coast. And that's when temperatures along the Oregon coast are going to really start to drop off from the 70s down to the low 60s and then also into the Willamette Valley as well. Now with our wind gust map, you can see we're generally between about 10 to 15 miles an hour. In terms of the winds, we'll have them pretty much out of the north during the day. Once we get towards the nighttime hours, winds calm on down, but we'll start seeing a little bit of the west wind, especially in and around Corvallis, that allows temperature cool just a little bit more. As we go through the day on Sunday, again, still kind of the same scenario, breezy conditions, uh, winds about 10 to 20 miles an hour generally out of the north. A little bit stronger of an onshore push, possibly up towards Corvallis on Sunday night into early on Monday, which would allow temperatures again to get back into the uh, maybe even to the mid 50s. But for the rest of the region, again, just continuing to look at the breezy conditions day in and day out. But things will finally again begin to change. So the day part forecast over in Corvallis again, generally uh, looks like Monday will be the hottest day looking at about 103. But then Tuesday night into Wednesday is when we're going to finally start to cool on off. In fact, we'll start seeing that onshore flow temperature Right now looking at 90 degrees, which is still above average, but that is much, much better overall. Now, fortunately, we haven't seen very much smoke in the region, but we may see some smoke from Washington State by the time we get towards Monday morning. So the hot temperature is right over us right now, and there's not a whole lot of change over the next couple of days because the high pressure just kind of settles right over our region. Now, once we get Tuesday and into Wednesday, we're going to have a system move mainly up to our north. It's going to be pretty weak at this time, but we're going to start seeing the uh, temperatures getting finally closer to our seasonal averages once we go through Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. In fact, the hottest temperatures generally stay towards the south and the east. We have little clipper systems that kind of keep the onshore flow in and around the area. Although not looking at significantly cooler temperatures, at least in terms of like below average or anything like that, temperatures though will be better overall. So here's your forecast for the Oregon coast. Temperatures in the 70s for Sunday and Monday, cooling way back into the low 60s by the middle and latter part of the week. Low temperatures generally into the 50s. For the Umpqua Basin, again, very hot for Sunday and into Monday. Temperatures nudge down a little on Tuesday and then 90s finally come back. 90 to 95 Wednesday through the end of the week. And for the Cascades, generally 85 to 90 degrees Sunday through Tuesday. And then we get some cool air moving into the region as well. Temperatures dropping back into the upper 70s by the latter part of the week. And for the Willamette Valley, again, very hot conditions. Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, the excessive heat continues. Overnight lows into the upper 50s to low 60s. And then the onshore flow kicks in on Wednesday. Temperatures only about 93 
and then temperatures hovering around 90 for the latter part of the week.